Hey guys, so the great thing about a bear market is that even though traders might be crying on the sidelines because their favorite JPEGs are falling in price, the builders keep on building. And every now and then something gets built that can completely transform the NFT space and take us in a very new direction. Today, I'm gonna to talk about one of those moments that happened recently with a new product released by PseudoSwap. And it's one that has been gaining a ton of traction, especially in the last week or so. So I'm gonna talk about what this product is, as well as the ways that the NFT market can change forever if it continues to scale. Now, PseudoSwap has been around for a while and mainly collectors would use it for its OTC trades okay so let's say you had a mutant ape and you wanted to trade it for somebody's moon bird just like for like then you could do that or you could take your mutant ape and then say that you wanted to trade it for a cool cat plus 15 eth you could do that as well and these are things that you normally wouldn't be able to do on an auction platform like OpenSea. but in july they announced a new product called pseudo amm which in their words is a new marketplace protocol that changes the way we think about nft liquidity and trading now at a glance pseudo amm doesn't really seem that unique okay if you head to their website you'll see that you can click on all collections and it seems like a normal marketplace where you have your listings your floor price and your best collection offers and if you click in on any of these collections you'll see that there's a bunch of listings that you can go buy individually and you also have this suite mode where you can choose how many nfts you want in one go so far it isn't anything we haven't seen on OpenSea or an aggregator like gem right but there are some unique features on PseudoSwap that when combined can actually change the game. First off, you have the fees, okay? PseudoSwap only takes a 0.5% fee compared to OpenSea's 2.5%. And they also don't honor creator royalties, which depending on the collection could be as high as 10%. And this is a very controversial point, but we're gonna get to that in a minute. But this can all add up to a lot of money. For example, let's say you were selling a doodle for 10 ETH on OpenSea. Well, you would still need to take into account the 2.5% fee that OpenSea takes, as well as the 5% royalty that goes to the doodles team, which means that at the end of the day, you're left with 9.25 ETH. Now, if you had sold that on PseudoSwap, you would only pay a 0.5% platform fee and you would avoid the royalties completely which means you end up with 9.95 eth which is a gain of 0.7 eth or about 1300 dollars second pseudoswap allows you to programmatically buy a large number of nfts with your own price settings meaning that you can dollar cost average in and out of collections for example let's say that you had 10 floor nfts from the same collection that you wanted to sell well, if you were on OpenSea, then you would have to list each one individually one by one, okay? So you might put one on the floor, you might list one just slightly above that one, and then slightly above that one, and so on. Now, if the floor price dropped, then you would have to adjust the entire ladder. And that's time consuming even with 10 NFTs, but imagine it with 50 or even 100. However, with PseudoSwap, you can make a pool with those 10 NFTs and set it so that the price increases automatically every time one of those 10 NFTs gets bought. So the 10 would originally get listed at whatever price you set and if someone buys one of them then the other nine automatically get bumped up by whatever amount you set so let's say by 0.1 eth and if someone buys another then the remaining ones increase in price again and so on and the same is true if you want a dollar cost average into a collection okay so for example let's say a certain collection has moon to an unsustainable level and I want to catch it on the way down. What I can do is make a pool to buy 10 NFTs starting with an offer just below the current floor. And if someone sells me that first NFT at that offer price, then it automatically reduces the next offer by 0.1 ETH or whatever I selected and so on and so forth with each additional buy. So these are called buy pools and sell pools. And already this is all pretty interesting, but there's one more major thing that you can do on PseudoSwap and it might be the most innovative part of the entire platform. Platform, and that's creating a two-sided liquidity pool. So this is when you deposit both NFTs and ETH and you're simultaneously offering to buy more of the NFTs from that collection. And at the same time, you're offering to sell NFTs as well. What this means is that you're providing liquidity on both sides through what is called an AMM or Automated Market Maker. And this is something that originates from DeFi and protocols like Uniswap. And in exchange for being a good Samaritan and providing all that nice liquidity, you get the opportunity to smash the like button before anyone else so please swap that gray button for a white one because it really does help out the channel but seriously what you get is the ability to collect fees on the spread as people swap in and out of your pools and i'm not going to go into a step-by-step -step on how to actually set up a pool but i will point you to a great video by gabrielle haynes if you're interested in learning more okay so now that you know what you can do on pseudoswap let me tell you why this can dramatically change the shape of the nft market if it continues to grow so big change number one 
PseudoSwap introduces instant sell liquidity for floor NFTs, okay? So if we go back to the collection page on PseudoSwap, you'll see this column here, which is called best offer. And what you'll see is that in many cases, the spread between the best offer and the actual floor price is very tight. In some cases, it's just below or even the same price. So if we take a look at base ghouls, we can see that the offer price is basically the same as the floor and the offer is higher than what you would currently get on OpenSea. This is all because more people are being incentivized to create these liquidity pools to actually earn fees and the offer is so close to the floor price because as we mentioned there are no royalties and the platform fee is only 0.5%. So if PseudoSwap gets bigger and bigger and more people are providing liquidity then you can see a future where any given collection that you buy into as long as it has enough volume should have an instant sell price where you don't even need to list it on the market and go through the undercutting game and all that. In other words, if you happen to I don't know, buy a few too many Pixelverse poops on a late Friday night when you should have been working on a YouTube video instead. Well, in the future, you'll have a way to get out quick if you need to. Now, this is huge because with higher liquidity, it reduces the volatility that you're used to seeing in NFTs today. For example, you may have seen people undercut each other all the way down and a collection could lose 20 or 30% in an instant only to then bounce back up and then back down, etc. That tends to happen because it's hard for them to find liquidity and so they just start to panic. Okay, big change number two. Two, as we said, NFT traders can now earn fees by providing liquidity, which means that they can basically become their own OpenSea or LooksRare. So if a trader holds a big position in an NFT collection, then it probably makes sense for them to earn a yield on those NFTs by entering into a liquidity pool if they think they can earn more on the fees than versus the impermanent loss, which I'm not going to get into, but I'll drop a link on that below. And I know realistically, many of us are not going to be creating liquidity pools, but the main benefit here is that we're going to be seeing a a large number of big players starting to enter the market, especially since they can now manage a huge number of NFTs in a very precise manner. And this is overall a net positive for the space. All right, big change number three, we might start seeing more liquidity for mid rares in the future. You see right now it's common wisdom to say that you should probably buy two floor NFTs instead of one mid rare from the same collection because the mid rare is gonna be a lot harder to sell, okay? The liquidity concentrates around the floor. But it's only a matter of time until we start seeing trait based pools on pseudo swap where let's say you can select a pool by you know whether it has a hoodie or glowing eyes or whatever and this means that more liquidity would be available for those mid rares and it could generally change how whales approach these collections and finally big change number four is the fact that this could be the beginning of the end for creator royalties you see the big secret that people try not to talk too much about is that the royalties are only enforceable at the marketplace level okay you might be surprised to hear that royalties are not not encoded in the smart contract themselves. And so you really just have like OpenSea keeping track of royalties in a Web2 database and then paying out to artists manually. This means that since the beginning, you had ways to get around the royalties, okay? You could just OTC trade an NFT with a friend without using a marketplace and that would be enough to avoid it. But now with PseudoSwap, you can avoid the royalties at the protocol level. Now, obviously this is a very controversial point because it means that creators just don't get paid. And this has been a reliable and one of the biggest sources of revenue for artists and roadmap projects. But the truth is that regardless of your or my opinion on the matter, the market is gonna do what the market does. And unless you can enforce this with some airtight smart contract, which I think is very difficult to do, and I haven't seen any proposals gain traction for that, then you can just assume that people over time are gonna choose to pay less. You simply can't rely on people to pay extra taxes just out of goodwill because that has never worked in real life. And there's no reason to believe that it's just gonna start working here and now for the first time. So then if we assume that royalties are on the way out, then this changes the business model a lot, right? And I think one alternative that could rise in popularity is one in which instead of royalties, the team just keeps a larger percentage of the supply. In this case, they're fully aligned with the collectors because if the value of the NFTs go up, then so does the value of the 20 or 25% of the supply that the creators own. One project that did this recently was 8 Aliens, where they actually launched with 0% royalties and a bigger supply for the team. Of course, this solution isn't perfect because the team eventually has to dump those NFTs in order to make some money. And so we just have to have some adult conversations about the right way to do that. But you could even make the argument that this is a more aligned model than royalties because with royalties, a creator would benefit from volatility regardless of what was happening, right? Like even if the price was plummeting, they would still make a lot of money off of those trades. Okay, that was a lot. But to sum up, we have instant liquidity for floor NFTs, a way to earn fees and become your own market maker, 
mid rares might become more viable in the future and royalties might be going away as a reliable source of income now how fast this all happens is difficult to predict but there are some upcoming catalysts that could accelerate growth specifically pseudoswap is going to be integrated into aggregators like gem which is now owned by OpenSea, as well as uniswap which acquired genie earlier in the year so from the user perspective you might just start buying nfts listed on pseudoswap without even realizing okay and because they have lower fees and more of these collection offers then you'll probably Probably get more competitive pricing than any other platform. Finally, it's worth noting that unlike OpenSea, PseudoSwap is completely on chain, meaning that anybody can build on the pseudo protocol, they can fork it if they want, they can take the listings and put it somewhere else. And so that composability could lead to exponential growth down the road. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you at the next video.